you have an informant that made calls or something like that, right? The, the part of it that's a little more subjective is the tool is only supposed to be used when all other, because it's so intrusive, when all other tools have been unsuccessful. So you have to get into a detailed discussion on paper about all the other tools that you've used and why they have not been successful and why they likely will not be successful. And that's a lot of work to really do that professionally and properly and not just make it a boilerplate thing. Like, well, this is never going to work because it never because I've done this 10 times and it's never worked. No, right. it has to be specific to this case. Why, why couldn't you just serve a search warrant at this person's house? Why wouldn't that fulfill the goals of the investigation? You have to explain that stuff. And then also you have to show that through what we would call toll analysis, looking at who else this phone is contacting. So just because you have an informant that called this person and talked about drugs, what if hypothetically that's the only person this crook is talking about drugs with? You don't need a wiretap then because you're getting that conversation from your informant. So you need to look at the phone records and be able to trace each one of those phone numbers that he's calling, investigate who, as much as you can, who's using those other numbers, what criminal history they have, who are they, um, what their role is in an organization to try to show that, hey, there's all these people that are communicating by telephone about this drug conspiracy. So it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And then once you flip the switch, I mean, you're monitoring it back in those days, often it would be 24 hours a day at first until you could really say like, okay, between midnight and 8 a.m., there's no call, so we're not going to staff it then. But very labor intensive. And yeah. there, there weren't even at that time contract monitors. So, you know, agents had to listen to phones and write up summaries of conversations and, you know. How did that group kind of prepare you for... I don't know, for lack of a term, the rest of your career. I mean, I saw the success of that investigative technique, I think, and kind of that became a little bit of my niche, right? So back in the early 90s, yeah, really all the 90s, I guess, really, I really focused on phones. And this was when cell phone technology was analog, you know? Like, you know, I don't know, people won't, you know, we may be the only people that remember this, but this is when you could be having a conversation with somebody and all of a sudden you hear static and you hear someone else on the line and you're like, who's this? And they're like, who's this? You, you would literally have calls swap over when it was analog and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. Obviously with digital, that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. But, but I kind of really embraced my, not embraced myself. I don't know, just really dove into what cell phone technology was all about then, how to use that to further a case, how to use that to locate people in the early nineties, which really nobody was doing at that time. and really for most of the 90s that's what we did the different groups i was in we did a lot of wiretap investigations first on the gang side then really on colombian organizations that were big in la 